Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. Here our first day, we are in the morning here. And with me is uh, yeah, famous Frank Holmes from US Global. And of course, we want to talk about those important themes of the world today. And uh, let's get started with some politics. Good morning, Frank. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Well, this morning I opened the session. Um, this is 25 years of this conference. I feel it's aging me uh, doing the opening <laughs> of too. macro forces. So what macro forces are out there? And I was trying to comment that Trade is important between U.S. and China because Chindia is 40% of consumption mm -hmm. because of 40% of the world's population, but China and America are 40% of global trade. Mm -hmm. So when there's something there that's of that nature, two countries could have a big impact, and they have. Mm -hmm. So the question I keep asked: What will? derail President Trump from winning the next election because historically mm -hmm. the, the person wins again. Uh, yeah. Not too often do they, do they lose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the big part is PMI. Purchasing mm -hmm. Manufacturers Index mm -hmm. is negative uh, yeah. in the U.S. and it's six months forward looking. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't turn quickly, then all of a sudden we're going to see more jobs, unemployment would change, mm -hmm. and that is the biggest risk he has. Mm -hmm. uh, Bloomberg, he spends a lot of money, but uh, he may help the Democrats yeah. because they have too many wackos have been basically taken over. The socialists are trying to take over the Democratic Party. Uh, and I just think, no, I think mm -hmm. the big issue is PMI. Mm -hmm. um, but Europe turned their PMI around by in the summer going to negative real interest rates, mm -hmm. which helped ignite gold. And that's the big theme here. Ross Beatty did the fire chat and <laughs> talked about building a new gold mining company. Yeah. He did it uh, 20 years ago, building a silver, 25 years ago, mm. a silver company. Mm. And then he built a copper company. Mm. And now it's into gold. So I'm a that big, tells us something, I would yes, say. Yes, it does. And I am a big <laughs> believer You know that gold is an important asset class. Yeah. Yeah. Over the past 20 years, 80% of the time, gold has been up. Mm -hmm. Now that's a heck of a bet, mm -hmm. you know, the math of that, and that's because of the rampant money printing that's taking place. Mm -hmm. And because there's no conscience to deregulate, streamline regulations out of Europe, mm -hmm. uh, then guess what? They have to use monetary policy to stimulate economic growth, negative real interest rates. Mm -hmm. So that is very good for gold. Mm -hmm. And now we have actual peak gold, no new developments There's like frackers for oil. There's nothing for gold. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that gold has become a more significant asset class, and the GDP per capita yeah. of Chindia, China, India, yeah. they're 40% 40, they're 40 of the world's population. They consume 53% of all gold now. Mm -hmm. 30 years ago, it was 10%. Mm -hmm. so it's yeah, because a, they're getting richer and richer, so they have the, the, and the purchasing power, I they would call get, it. Yeah. And, they, and they have yeah. the cultural affinity. Exactly. So it's a year of the rat. So if you're born yeah. in the year of the rat, yeah. you're going to get a gold rat as a gift. Now, I don't know <laughs> if I would like a gold rat as a gift. Yeah. Maybe, uh, hopefully, it was the year of the tiger or the bull. Okay. But, but <laughs> I just think it melted. But they buy the gold. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's important yeah. to recognize. Okay. Um, and the other part was the quant world. The mm -hmm. quant world is still playing a much more significant role in the formation of capital and picking gold stocks. <clears throat> and that's why I'm chairman of Goldspot, because it's the first company with 11 PhDs in Montreal mm -hmm. that are using the quants and it's helped Yamana have gold discoveries. Mm -hmm. Grand Columbia is here, they have gold discoveries. Uh, and it, it, because of this, using this, this quant approach, and what it does, is it stops wasted spending. Mm -hmm. So there's less money for exploration, mm -hmm. which is so important that you have a better way of spending and finding targets. Course, yeah, and you, and you can focus much better. Yes. Right? Yeah, perfect. Um, what is your gold target then? Because uh, it was quite funny, when I saw gold at 1585, up to uh, yeah, almost 1600 something, it created in my point in figure chart a real buy signal again. Now I have 2030 as a target. What's your target? Well, I think it can go through 1900 yeah. in the next uh, 18 months. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not and the world's not going to come to an end. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that the Definitely policies, not. and I talk about government policies are either monetary or fiscal, and there's this massive imbalance. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to 2008, it was global trade, and now it's global taxation and regulation. Mm -hmm. That has only helped create Bitcoin. You know, that, that whole growth yeah. of that whole sector of speculation in those coins is all because of excessive regulations, mm -hmm. and it also bodes well for gold as an asset class. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, I mean, we are both long for precious metals, that's for sure. Um, I find also a, quite an interesting development the last week because I read that uh, China is now importing 10.5 million barrels of oil a day, a day, which is the same like 2005 the US had when, on the last peak, I would call it. So uh, this this shows me a little bit more like that China is definitely not going into recession nor an economic downturn. Uh, absolutely. So what, what do you think um, in comparison now with the trade war with the US and China, do you think that China is still that strong that they can say, okay, 
let's squeeze a bit more on the US side, but on the other side, Trump needs a deal because of the PMI, for example. Yeah, I, I think that China wants global trade to be booming again. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very positive what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The process of negotiating has changed under President Trump. Uh, that's all that's really happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think that China, seven years ago, they set up a debate here for me because I'm so pro China, understand as an mm -hmm. asset class. And they had some ringer come in and he's walked away with a broken nose uh, as a debate, teasing. <laughs> but I think what's important is that in, this, in those seven years, mm -hmm. the, the China market, if you bought an ETF, is, is gone up almost 100% and junior mining is off 36%. Mm -hmm. And big cap mining in, in, the U, in Canada and the US, it's still negative. Mm -hmm. So don't bet against China. Yep. They've sent their best brains to the best European schools, mm -hmm. to the best American schools and Canadian schools. Mm -hmm. They're 40% off, of, we take a look at uh, master's degrees in physics, et cetera, mm -hmm. and they go back. And yep. guess what? They want our lifestyle. Of course. They want the European lifestyle. Yes. They want the American dream. Yeah. And so they get a right to vote, and it's going to change. So they know they have to become members of the Communist Party, mm -hmm. which, is, which is now growing with more and more successful mm -hmm. people that studied abroad. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of time. I'm bullish as can be. Definitely. But the other sleeper metal is copper. That's what I wanted to touch next. Definitely. A sleeper. I love copper too. Yeah, I love exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, and this whole boom in, in building data centers and yeah. uh, Tesla cars, et cetera, et cetera. This yeah. unique Charging copper. infrastructure. You need copper and you need mm. more copper. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're in deficit still in supply. Mm -hmm. Any earthquake out of Chile, immediately we're going to have a, a, a spike, a surge. Mm -hmm. uh, and in New York second, it can be you know, $3.80, $4. Mm -hmm. and just to recognize how tight that is. Yep. So I'm very bullish in copper. And that's why from as a Glencore, you go right down to Copper Bank, uh, mm -hmm. which Gianni's my favorite little yeah. spec, because it gives you optionality. Mm -hmm. So if copper, when would copper goes above 350, mm -hmm. his penny stock is worth a dollar. Definitely, right? yeah. So where can I, without debt leverage, mm -hmm. get that optionality on a copper? Mm -hmm. So we like stocks like that mm -hmm. uh, being contrarian. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think also copper is like a longer term play because we, we did not see any new large mine projects yes. even being developed nor going into production. And, and also my speech today was ESG. Yeah. So ESG is dominating as another form of taxation and regulation, mm -hmm. uh, institutional money or government money going into companies. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's basically another socialist type of, of model. And I'm a big believer of good corporate governance and being environmental, but I think it's just another way of, of attacking mm -hmm. the resource sector, which mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. But what is that going to do? Less exploration, less development. Mm -hmm. uh, money now has to go more and more to social welfare. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and it's going to have to go into more uh, solar panels, mm -hmm. not exploration to try to find a deposit. Mm -hmm. So we could get a huge commodity boom, but only a few of those mining companies are really going to participate mm -hmm. where you make 10, 20 baggers. Absolutely. So times look good. I would say uh, the new decade looks to me like the start of a new metal boom. Would you agree? Yes, I agree. And the resolution of the uh, tariff uh, trade war, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's very positive for growth. Yeah, absolutely. Great. That was a great final sentence. Frank, thank you very much. I, I think we see us later at PDAC. Yes. And uh, yeah, let's uh, check out some Copper Bank. And uh, for sure, we are bullish for copper, precious metals, and all what is related to e-mobility, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Super. Thank you very much. Take care. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, Frank Holmes from US Global. And uh, you heard it. Copper is really on the run. And uh, copper is the future metal, but also, of course, precious metals are super important. And uh, yeah, I would say check it out. Thanks for watching us. And bye-bye from Vancouver.